Welcome to the New York State Association of School Business Officials webinar. Today's program is Treasurer BOE Reports and is sponsored by Kadeni Architects. Your host for today's program is Donna Clement, Director of Professional Development for ASBO. Operator assistance is available at any time during this conference by pressing zero pound. A question and answer session will follow the presentation. You may send chat questions at any time during the presentation using the chat window indicated by a speech bubble icon located to the right of the presentation. I will now turn the call over to our speaker. Donna, you may begin. Thank you, Leo, and welcome, everyone. We have the reason for this particular webinar is uh, when the Treasurer's Steering Committee was meeting, uh, they were realizing that there are a variety of reports that they do for the Board of Education, and, and there's a real difference in how people do them. So we thought this might be a good webinar, and thank you all for attending. We have with us Renee Palmer and Sylvia Fassler-Walch and Anne-Marie Valpone, who are going to give you their ideas and uh, why they do the reports that they do. And we certainly thank our sponsor for today as well. So, Renee, if you would like to begin. Sure. Hello, everybody. Uh, we do a monthly treasury report. And, and when I started here at Lake George, it was already pretty pretty much set in place. We you know, tweaked a little bit of the format, but... but um, we have a cover sheet that I sign, as well as our business official signs. And our new uh, auditors are suggesting that they review it as well. Uh, this is our cover sheet generally. And then the first few pages are the cash reconciliation sheets. And one of the most important things that our board likes to see is the beginning and ending balances and to make sure that they tie out to our trial balance. So when I'm doing this, I start with actually doing my bank recs on a separate format, and then I consolidate everything onto these sheets. And we have one, I, I have separate bank accounts for each of my funds because I prefer that. So we have, we separate it from all of our funds, and when the market is better, we have another section where we show all of our investments. Any CDs, we would show the rates, the dates, the date of maturity, prorate the interest showing anything like that. Right now we don't have anything invested because we're getting a really great rate, comparatively speaking, in our regular money market. So to, and to show more detail on each one of these cash balances, then we have our cash receipts. And the general fund is where we definitely show more detail to show where the money has come from for the month, but we do it for each, each fund separately. Um, and this is where, when my business official and I go through the treasurer's report, she'll, she'll highlight things to the board so that they know where, we're, where we are within the year. You know, in the beginning of the school year, we're getting in taxes, and that's always a higher number. You know, our interest rates, we're letting them know whether they're going down or going up or where we stand with that. Um, you know, like you can see this time, this particular month, we had a refund of prior year expense, so we would explain that. That's why this little detail, I think, helps. It helps the board be more in tune with what's actually happening. Um, so we do the same thing for our disbursements. Uh, we have all of the warrants. We show them all separately, anything that we're transferring for payroll and the due to and from. And we do that each fund separately as well. And these numbers, of course, tie out to the cover sheet. And uh, you know, I have it set up so that everything just pulls to the cover sheet from these sheets so, so that it's kind of a check and balance of myself. And I use these numbers when I actually do the bank rec, so I kind of do them simultaneously. And it keeps me, uh, it keeps everything fresh in my mind for when I'm going through it with everybody. So we go through those. First one. Oops, sorry, that went too quick. We have a lot of uh, extra classroom accounts, so we detail that out for the board every month as well. And the way we do this is we keep ours. Um, we keep it as called an other fund in our accounting software. We use WinCap, and we keep it all as ledger accounts. So I do a trial balance, and I balance it off with what our extracurricular uh, treasurer does. I confirm all of that, and then I just detail it here. She gives a detail sheet of activity to our business administrator to present to the board. So they know, 
you know, we got $21,000 in receipts and extracurricular accounts. Well, what was that related to? So she would give her a detail of that, and um, they would explain that to the board. Again, keeping them as informed as possible. And we do our petty cash each month. This doesn't really change very often. We don't use a lot of petty cash, but just to keep them abreast of the situation, we, we show that. And then I didn't, I couldn't get my profit and loss from my cafeteria. We run our in-house cafeteria. I couldn't get it to work on the slide. I apologize, but it's a really good, it's a really good format, I think. And we present that every month. It shows uh, the difference in, you know, the inventory, and it gives a whole lot of analysis. Um, we give that to the board, and then of course we give them all of the trial balances for all of the funds, and uh, a revenue status report and a budget status report. And we give the general fund every month, and we do all of the other funds on a quarterly basis. That's what our board has asked us for. Uh, what else? What else did they ask? In Lake George, our board, board meetings are pretty simple. The board is pretty in tune to everything that's going on. So the, the treasurer's report, it kind of speaks for itself. It's just the numbers. So. Oh, and what, one of the other things that I do internally, we actually don't give to the board. I do a separate spreadsheet for our reserve fund so that the, to show how the cash and the liability would actually tie out at the end of the year. And I also do a spreadsheet to prove any due to and due funds between the accounts. That's just internal, though. We don't give that to the board. That's just so that my business official knows that everything's all tied out. So that's, that's it in a nutshell for us. Do we want to give it over to Anne Marie? To Sylvia? That's fine. You have to give us. You have to click on it on our name so we can control I did that. the slide. It's working. There you go. Hi, my name is Anne Marie Volpone, district treasurer at the Dobbs Ferry School District. Um, I've been district treasurer for about 19 years, and um, you know, throughout the years, the reports have somewhat changed. Um, just basically the formats. Um, I think the report that we have now is is excellent. Our board loves it. Um, and, and let's see what the next slide is. Go back. Hi, my name is Sylvia. Director of Finance and Facilities here in Dobbs Ferry. We're in southern Westchester, New York. And um, as Amory told you, the board has been getting these reports for many years. Um, I've been here about three and a half years. When I got here, uh, there were a lot of conversations about having a standard treasurer's report. Um, they, we asked them what they wanted to see, what information we would like. They would like to see. Amory and I took on a project of really getting what we thought was the best treasurer's report that we could put together, the most informative, the most concise. And the board was interested in getting a report that re that provided them with timely and relevant information in a concise and a consistent manner. So we embarked on gathering many, many treasurer reports from the area, from other school districts in the area. And we put this together, and it really works for us. Um, if it will work for you, just let us know. We'll be happy to email it to you. And again, the objective was for us to give the most information in a, in a concise format. We didn't want to give out you know, a 15-page treasurer report. We wanted it to be a couple of pages, and then if there were questions, we could provide additional information. So this is would be um, the top portion of my treasurer's report, and it, it's a summary of all the receipts, disbursements in each of the funds. Uh, is a, a summary of the the bank reconciliation on the bottom. Um, the receipts. The reason it's highlighted in green is that underneath is a description of what makes up that total. Um, all the receipts that came in for um, uh, on our cash receipt schedule or through journal entries, um, the disbursements um, is also listed below, and we have a separate slide for that. I just don't want to keep going back and forth. 
Um, so that has to tie in with the detail below it. Um, anytime there's interfund transfers, we make sure that the total at the end is has to balance to zero because it has to go from one fund to another. Um, it shows outstanding checks in the two funds, mostly general fund and trust and agency, because trust and agency has um, trust and agency account and a payroll account. Um, occasionally, for school lunch, there are deposits that are in transit, and um, occasionally there are transfers that are also can be in transit. So when we look at the bank reconciliations, some important things to note is to make sure the date on the bank statement and the date of the activity are the same. So if we're doing a June 30th um, bank reconciliation, we have to make sure that the bank statement date is June 30th as well, and verify that all the transactions on the books are reflected on the bank statements, and vice versa, that all of the transactions on the bank statements are recorded on the books. The opening book balances for the month must agree with the general ledger. They must agree with the ending book balances from the prior month and the ending book balances or the closing book balances on the prior month's treasurer reports. Uh, the way to do the spreadsheets is that the, those numbers automatically can't uh, carry over so that there is no room for clerical error or transposition error or any type of error. It's automatic, and so we know that the balances we ended with the prior month are what we're starting out with in the following month. This is a sample of the receipts that can come into our general fund account. Um, they're through ACH, which uh, typically would be your school taxes. Um, cash or checks that come into the business office are deposited by um, our payroll clerk and are taken to the bank. She also lists them in the cash receipt journal. Um, interest that comes into the bank is listed on the bank statement, so that is also posted as a journal entry. Any wires that come in through um, sales tax or uh, pay schools or my Nutra kids, and uh, any bank account transfers that are reflected in a journal entry schedule. Cash disbursements. I list the warrants separately. Um, the board receives the warrants um, on an ongoing basis, but this, at the end of the month, summarizes all of the warrants that they have seen the details for. Um, this particular month reflects interfund transfers, and that was money that was sent from the A fund to the special A fund for money that came in through the NACH for our grants. Um, and the bank account transfers here are transfers that happen from our investment account or money market account that go into our general fund checking account to cover the warrants. And when it is done through inter within the general fund, rather, it's listed here as disbursement, but it, it is also listed as a receipt because it is within the general fund. Um, I think that's it on this slide. Um, as we said earlier, on, on the first part of the Treasurer's report, the line for interfund transfers must net to zero, and those transfers can take place between any of the funds. Um, the general fund ledger balances should also be in agreement within all the funds as well. The closing book balance for each account must agree with the general ledger account. Uh, the closing book balance should never be less than zero, although sometimes it is if you um, send out a warrant before funding it or something like that, but you have to make sure, especially at June 30th, that that doesn't happen so that the ending book balances at June 30th are never less than zero. Um, in each fund on our treasurer's report, there are several bank accounts. It could be checking, investment accounts, other types of accounts that are included in that column. 
but even though they're included together on the treasurer's report, we should we do maintain individual account bank reconciliations um, both on paper and on the financial software system. Our outstanding checks are checks that are issued um, by the district that have not been paid for by the bank. So um, whether you're on Finance Manager or on WinCap, we have switched to WinCap as of January 1 of this year. Um, you know, the reconciling and um, uh, canceling the, the checks that have been paid by the bank are, are relatively easy on both systems. Um, it, it provides a, a worksheet that will print the outstanding checks. Uh, WinCap also prints uh, a report that says uh, what checks you have checked off to be cleared, and um, it, it's very helpful. And on the flip side of that, the deposits in transit, uh, they are deposits that are entered on the financial software system that are not yet recorded by the bank. Also reconciled on the financial software system, either WinCap or Finance Manager or whatever you are using. And then the ending balance, very simply, um, must agree with the bank statements. So you want to make sure again that the dates coincide, that the balances coincide, that your um, collateralization is high enough based on your bank um, balances. At all at the end of each month, but especially at June 30th. As a preparer, of course, I sign the um, top portion of the treasurer's report. Uh, we also have the district clerk sign off on it, and she is basically checking that. Um, the fields on the report are filled in and, and have a number in them. In other words, um, the list where it says there are outstanding checks in a general fund, to make sure that I put that number in there. Um, she double checks that my receipt in total is the total in the detail on the bottom of the report, um, the same with the disbursement total. She makes sure that my interfund transfers zero at the end. Um, our, in, our claims auditor also reviews it, but she does a more in-depth um, review of it. She actually goes through each bank rec to make sure that um, it's done properly, that the GL um, accounts at the end of the month match what my cash balances are. Um, she checks my, my transfer totals. Um, Sylvia, as the Director of Finance and Facilities, does not look at the until she receives it in her board packet. Because as Treasurer, I report directly to the Board of Ed, and um, any questions that they may have are, are directed back to me. We also give them a copy of the Revenue Status Report, the Budget Status Report, and the Budget Transfers. Um, when we were going through the process of revising what we were giving them a few years ago, uh, there was a lot of conversation. And there was conversation that on the front of the treasurer's report, if you remember, there is a list of revenues that were received. And that is revenues received for the month. However, this report, the revenue status report, is a cumulative report for going from the beginning of the year to the month that we are reporting on. So this will never tie out to what's on the treasurer's report, but this is the way the board wanted it. They wanted to see how we're doing compared to the projection for the year. And also, this is not fully cash basis. This, when we bill for day school tuition or we bill for health services um, or for the taxes, we recognize those billing, that revenue, as soon as it's billed. We are billing it through the accounts receivable module of the system, financial system we're using. And so it is recorded as income as soon as it's billed. So these two will never tie out, but this is the way that our board wanted to see the information.
This is our budget status report. Um, and it's not every code, it's by function. Um, and it just gives them a quick glance at some of the activity um, where, you know, the amount that we've paid out in each of the codes, the amount that is still currently encumbered. Um, the negatives in the available column are due to salary codes, and we reconcile the salary codes at the end of the year. So this kind of gives them just a, at a quick glance what's going on with the uh, appropriation status report. This is page one, and it does continue on page two for a little bit. They've recently asked us, the board has recently asked us to provide them with a list of the budget transfers that are taking place each month. Anything $10 or over, they have approved, but I'm sure, like many of you, most of our budget transfers are less than that, and they felt like they wanted to know what was going on, even though they didn't have to approve them um, but based on their policy. So we give them this list each month of the budget transfers that took place during the month. And our last um, topic is really to talk about going paperless. It has been a big push from the Board of Education to go paperless. We are trying to get to 100% direct deposits. Um, beginning July 1st, we will only be sending out purchase orders by email. We are working with the bank to start making um, vendor payments online to eliminate checks. We had attended a cybercrime um, workshop where they talked about the best thing you can do for your district is to stop issuing checks because every time you issue a check, you're putting your bank account and routing number out there. And so we're really trying to combine that with the paperless initiative in the district and move towards um, or away from issuing as many checks as possible. And so we are also, um, with the change to WinCap effective September 1st, we are going to be going to self-help for employees where they will go online and print out their own direct deposit slips if they choose to. So the business office will no longer be distributing them. We won't be printing them. We won't be stuffing them into envelopes. We won't be mailing them, either inter-office or by regular mail. And I bet that most people will probably print out their direct deposit slip the first week we do this, at December 31st and June 30th. Uh, I really doubt that many people will do it on a regular basis, and hopefully it will save a significant amount of time and paper. We are also at the same time moving to electronically submitted timesheets, so we will be eliminating the paper trail of timesheets. Um, and I think Board of Ed is going to laptops, so we're not going to be sending out treasury reports. We'll be emailing them. I know that's not really part of the treasury report, but it's part of how we're going to be handling a lot of our finances. Does anybody have any questions? I have a question. How are you achieving direct deposit for all your employees? Um, well, we cannot require it because... That's what I was wondering. I'm like, you can't force them because we tried yeah, that. <laughs> we actually are in negotiations with our teachers unit, and it is on the table. And the way that it will be worded is that... Um, Something to the effect of, you know, direct deposit with, you know, exception if you need it, something like that. But we we plan to be, you know, hopefully to get to like 97, 98 percent direct deposit. I think that, um, you know, most people when you explain to them, you know, there are some diehards that you're not going to get to switch, but. You explain to them the biggest thing to me is on a snow day you still get paid, you know. Right. Um, your money's available first thing in the morning. You don't have to wait for a check to clear. I mean, you know all the reasons why they should do it. So we're really sending out a memo um, next week to the people who don't have it, just kind of trying to encourage them. But yes, we cannot force it. But we'll be issuing five or six paychecks instead of you know 250. Right. What about your substitute teachers? We're trying. We're going to try to get them on as well. Those yeah, we are actually the bulk of who is who are not on. You know, we yeah, have. Yeah, we're about ninety-seven percent direct deposit. We are not. We're trying. We would like to get there. Okay, just curious. 
Okay. Any other particular points that um, you would like to make? And if anyone has any questions, please send them in through the chat function, or uh, Leo can tell us how to ask a uh, voice question. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time we'll conduct the question and answer session. If you'd like to ask a question, please press 7 pound on your phone now, and you'll be placed in the queue in the order received. Please listen for your name or location to be announced and be prepared to ask your question when prompted. Audiocast listeners may continue to type in questions through the chat window located to the right of the presentation. Please address your chat questions to the Q&A group. We're ready to begin. Okay. Now, while waiting for those questions, um, I'm curious, how well do you think that the uh, Board of Education really understands the report? Our Board of Education thoroughly understands the reports, I would think. Oh, yeah. They, they know what they're looking at, they know what they asked for when they asked us, asked us to revise it a few years ago. Yeah, we, our Board is, is very knowledgeable, and they do their homework. Wow, that's good. That's good. Renee, how about yours? Um, I think it depends on the board member. I think they know what they're looking at, but they're, you know, they're not accountants. They're not financial people, but mm -hmm. they they understand good and bad, you know. <laughs> they understand that red and black, right? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Oh. Uh. We have some very long-term board members as well, so they've been doing it a long time. Mm -hmm. There's a question on here about um, having people sign for their check stubs. Um, we do that, actually, every payroll right now. If When we go to eliminating the um, you know the presentation of the direct deposit slips. We will do an audit payroll twice a year. Um, we I know we're losing that one step, but we will still do an audit payroll twice a year where people will have to sign for their direct deposit slips or paychecks. Yeah, we do an audit payroll a year as well. Right, and then what are the requirements to give the Board of Education? As far as I know, just the treasurer's report, it's the backup that they can choose, right? Right. Is that right? Yeah. Renee, is that what you believe? Yeah, I believe you just need to give them a, a financial picture of of the district. So I think it's just how, how much detail they want. Right. Do you pay? Yeah. There was, um, when I was uh, doing the um, financial workshops for the um, Board of Education, there was an example that came up from one of the uh, business officials who was in the audience with the uh, board members at that time. And they were saying that they not only do that um, audit like you were talking about where even people who have direct deposit come in and sign. But what they have done, and they did it periodically, was they made a list of all of the employees in each of the buildings, and the principal had to sign and verify that those people actually worked in the building. Oh, so they, they did that as an, an extra check. That's a nice layer. Yes, it is a good idea. Yeah. So that's something that you can certainly uh, consider here as well. We're, there's a question here, isn't there a statutory requirement or something written in state law? Are you asking about the treasurer's report? While you sort through that, we have a live question. Okay. Michael DeVito, Long Beach uh, City School District. Hi, the question is, is um, do you do any bill paying online, and if so, how did you start to implement it? And also, are we able to print a copy of the PowerPoint presentation from today? In your uh, confirmation email, under the link that connected you to the PowerPoint, underneath that it says the handout, and then you can print that handout. And I don't, Renee, do you do any bill payments online already? No, not yet. Well. We are going to move towards that. We have our bank rep coming in um, to discuss that. Our software, neither of the software, the major software, can do the EFT payments currently from the system. 
so we are going to move um, initially to online banking payments. And I can't really tell you exactly how that's going to work because we're first having this meeting next week. But I believe it's going to be similar to how we pay our household bills online. And there will be layers of approval, um, either you know both the accounts payable person and either Amory or myself and the claims auditor that will have the ability to release the payments after all of those approval processes have gone through. Thank you. Thank you. Are you doing it, Michael? No, uh, we're not doing it yet, but we're interested in doing it. Okay. I'd really like to do it directly from the software as an EFT payment, but it's, the software is not there yet. I'm sure it'll come shortly if there's a need for it. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Do we have a, a clarification on the? Um, the question on on was it the treasurer's report? I, I don't have one. But Renee, do you know the answer to that? Not that I know of. We can find out and get back to you for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there's uh, there are only like five reports that a board of education really needs to get, or that's statutory. Other than that, the other reports that the board is given really is because it, they have been asked for or it's the uh, tradition of the district. But there, it's surprising how few reports are actually required by law. And all of that can be found in the school law book. I've lost uh, contact with the chat questions. Are there any other questions that have come in? I don't see any. I don't see any. Ladies and gentlemen, as a reminder, if you'd like to ask questions on the phone, press 7 pound. If you'd like to ask a chat question, please use the pull down. Address it to the Q&A group on the right-hand side of the presentation. Now, as uh, treasurers and as uh, business officials, we've talked about the various reports that you're using and the reports that the board um, asks for. Are there any other reports that you use for yourselves to put information together? Are there uh, any techniques that you have found over the years to gather all of this information to make it easier for you to get put your reports together? Anne-Marie, you've been doing it longer. Let's, I want to know what you do first. Um, you know, I make sure that all my, my bookkeeping is done. You know, you make sure that... Um, my my payroll person who does the cash receipts, you make sure, you know, she's up to date and she has all the receipts for the month um, on the schedule. Um, I make sure that all the warrants are closed. Um, I go through the journal entries and I make sure I have all the activity for the month, um, you know, the interest posted, the transfers, um, anything coming into the account uh, via wire, or anything going out, you know, my transfers within the general fund are all posted. Um, and then I'm just running the reports. You know, I go into WinCap, I run cash receipts, um, I uh, go through the cash disbursements, um, and uh, you know, work with those reports in order to get my bank records done. Um, at the end of the month, and and. When my treasurer's report is done, I, we have a separate check log that as checks are opened um, through our inter-office mail or mail coming in from the outside, we have a person that logs every check, um, who it's from, the date, um, the purpose of why we're receiving this check. Um, from there, it goes to uh, my payroll person who deposits the check, writes out the cash receipt. Um, puts it in a, a schedule, and I make sure that all of those checks that were received for the month of, let's say, March, are indeed have been deposited within the month of March. Um, so 
you know, occasionally we may receive a check that is for our middle school activity fund or it could be for, you know, comes to the business office, but maybe it's for our PTSA. So I always make a note that, okay, that <laughs> check was not deposited into our general fund and, you know, was was rerouted to, to the, you know, the party that should have received it. Um, so that's also kind of like a check and balance that every item that does come into the business office is deposited. Um, what else? You know, in, in doing a cash flow, I find that the way our treasurer's report is set up, it's a lot easier for me to, you know, at a glance, you know, realize am I going to need a TAN before the end of June? Am I going to need a TAN before the, you know, big September payroll, um, you know, when the teachers come back? Um, so, to, you know, for me, I think this treasurer's report is very helpful. Um, sometimes it becomes a little tedious, and, and if there are a lot of transfers going back and forth, um, and I'm still trying to get the knack on, on WinCap, um, but it's just, you know, it's a learning curve. <laughs> um, we have been doing them. The claims order, auditor is, is satisfied with them, um, and I, I, I really enjoy it. I think it's, I think it's a great little form that we've, we've put together. We have another audio question from Diane at West Hempstead UFSD. Yes, hi. Hi. I was just wondering if you guys have been requested by the board or if anyone out there has ha been asked to provide a cash flow forecast in light of the uh, recent situations with state aid and so forth, and if so, if, if what type of reports have been provided, and also at what time, if um, any during the year, you provide a fund balance report to the board? Renee, you want to answer that or you want us to? I can go. Um, I do cash flow projection as well as the um, – I try to keep it up to date with what's actually happened. And I do a cash flow projection for the whole year in the beginning mm -hmm. of the year. I start doing fund balance projections. Probably I'd like to do it in January. By the time I get to it, it's probably closer to February. And then I do them every couple weeks, every two or three weeks, to see where we stand. Um, we okay. don't usually use, we don't usually report that to the board until later, until we really know where we stand. Right. And if we'll have enough to have, um, if we'll if we'll have what they want us to have to apply to the tax levy the next year, or if we have too much and what our plan is for it. Uh, so the cash flow is. It's something also that we don't give to the board. As far as I know, I've only been here a couple of years, but I believe that that's always just an administrative thing that okay. they've done here. Uh, the board hasn't asked for it, but, mm -hmm. you know, we're Lake George. We're, we don't usually have a cash flow problem. <laughs> that's good. We have, we're very uh, fortunate. <laughs> we have not also, we have not been asked for a projected cash flow. We are working on a five-year budget projection, but um, the cash flow, is, like Renee said, is also for us internal. We look at it, decide if we're going to need a TAN, make sure we're okay. Um, you know, that, that's that been, it's definitely, we have it, and it, but it's really been for internal use only. They'll ask questions, the boards will ask, you know, are we okay through the end of the year? They know, right. you know, through the year the big payroll is coming. Um, they were concerned with the headlines that the state aid payments were being held up, but mm -hmm. we don't get a tremendous amount of state aid, so it, it did affect us, but it really wasn't hugely impactful. Um, as far as reserve balances, we do a budget status board um, the first week in January, and we provide them with the reserve balances at that time. That's the first time in the year that we're doing that. And then with the budget presentations, um, throughout March and the beginning of April, we give them reserve balances. Um, and then again in June, um, you know, prior to June 30th, when I need to get any transfers approved, um, we do a final budget status um, projection with the reserve, you know, balances at that time. But there's no, we don't, I have a spreadsheet with reserves, and once in a while they'll ask for it, so I'll just give it to them, but it's not um, given to them routinely. Okay, thank you. Okay. okay. 
Now, Renee, did you want to do a, a follow-up to that uh, question about what kinds of reports do you put together to help you with your, your reports? Um, the way that I started doing it, be, like I said, I've only been doing it for a couple of years, is I really do, while I'm doing the bank recs and I'm confirming that all of the activity is booked and everything is, I kind of do this simultaneously. So when I'm doing the bank rec, I'm also doing the treasurer's report, at least the cash portion. And then you know, I'll analyze all of the treasures or all of the trial balances after the after the fact. Our school lunch program is a bigger is a bigger project because we have to um, once we get that all reconciled, then we review the revenue and we then we'll have to uh, submit for our um, the reimbursements and book that and then do the profit and loss. So that's a little more involved, but just as Anne Marie said, you know, I do print out the cash disbursements, print out the cash receipts, we verify everything. So it's just in tandem kind of doing everything. I kind of do it all at once. I think I found that to be easier for me. Because while you're working on the bank recs and you're seeing all of the cash and the numbers, it's fresh in your mind to, you might as well just do your treasurer's report at the same time and then the numbers all go together. Right. I That's agree. Works for me. Yeah, I agree. So you have all of these reports open and, and the numbers are just flowing into them. And so that when it comes to the board meeting time, you're not in a rush to try and get the information in. It's pretty much all there. Yes. Yeah, the, the, yeah, the first of the month happens and, you know, we have all of our banking online, so I print off the statements as soon as they're available and I start doing everything then. And if there is a known issue, when I go to the board meeting and I know they have the treasurer's report for that month, I will take the backup documentation with me so that when they ask questions, I can answer them. But they, it's not something we provide to them. Okay, that was the question I was asking. Is it typical that the treasurer goes yeah. to the board meetings? I was curious of that, too. Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> <laughs> We have because, some additional yeah. chat questions. Yeah, oh, good. The question about the um, paper list, how are you handling the other copies of the purchase orders, this is all going to be new to us. It's effective July 1st, so we're just getting our ducks in a row now. As obviously, the vendor copies won't be printed. Um, they will go to um, – they will be sent out electronically. The um, school copies, we currently print out four copies. It's the vendor copy, the school copy, which we keep in a binder in numerical order, the receiving copy, which goes to the um, requester, and the accounting copy, which goes to accounts payable. We will be able to eliminate the school copy as well as the vendor copy. Um, we still will send out um, either electronically or at this point just by intro office mail, but hopefully that will go away as well, the receiving copy so we can get them back signed. And our accounting copy, we have an accounts payable clerk that I don't think is going to give up the accounting copy. So <laughs> imagine we will still be printing those as well. But we'll be eliminating half of the copies. We'll be eliminating the postage, the envelopes. And so it, for us, you know, it's incremental and it's just the beginning. Maria Smith from um, Southampton Public School asked uh, to request uh, ASBO to set up some additional training in the future regarding online payments in conjunction with major software companies such as Finance Manager and WinCap, if, if that's possible. Okay, good suggestion. Actually, um, well, both of those vendors will be at the June conference. And um, so people will have access to them. And um, certainly as a uh, user of their software, they would be very interested in helping us, and that would help with that partnership to uh, become available. But we will pursue that as well. Now, because of uh, some of the technical difficulties, which I've never had before, <laughs> um, do both of you use the same software? I use WinCap. Mm -hmm. Yes, I use WinCap also. We were on Finance Manager, and um, like I said earlier, we've uh, switched to WinCap as of January 1st. 
I used WinCap at my last district as well, as, and I and implemented it here at Lake George, and I'm exceedingly happy with it. Yeah, we are. Yeah, I You'll came get from more a happy environment and wouldn't impose it on anyone, but they decided to change by themselves, <laughs> and they're happy that they did. Yes, we are. What um, what do you think is a, a good background that a treasurer needs to be able to be efficient and effective in the position? Organizational skills, accounting sense. Yeah, you have to be you have to be good with numbers. You know, if 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 there is a, a mistake somewhere or, or something is not proofing, you know, you have to be able to to think it through. Um, you have to realize where your numbers are coming from and where could the mistake be. Um, because otherwise you, you, you could be sitting there looking at this stuff for days and it wouldn't make a bit of sense. <laughs> um, I think, yeah, you have to be very analytical. Right. And I think you need a, you'd need a good, strong accounting sense, if not just the full background. Cause you need to understand what's a debit, what's a credit. And when fund you, accounting is, is interesting. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Fund accounting is definitely a, a, a different way of doing things. Uh, we had really what we're we're talking about the treasurer's reports for the for the board of ed, and each of you were saying that you feel that your uh, board members really understand the reports that they are getting. Is there anything in particular that your uh, superintendent, the business officials? Uh, the uh, even maybe the board president is doing to help the board understand the financial piece, or maybe you have a uh, financial committee or an auditing committee that is helpful, because that's really what the question here is: to how how um, is certainly the treasurer putting the report together so the board understands it, but also that other piece, that board is so important to on that fiscal responsibility that um, they have for the school district. Are you noticing some things that maybe you're doing differently or people are talking about that really helps the board understand the issues? The boards are required to go to the fiscal training, but we've only had one new board member since I've been here. Um, and when he started, I guess it was two years ago he came on the board, um, he came in and sat with me for about three hours, and I gave him a school district 101 lesson. And you know, he has a financial background, so he wasn't starting from nothing. But he said it was incredibly helpful, and hopefully it was. So maybe just taking the time to educate people um, and helping them understand one way to do it. And we do have an audit committee, which we meet three or four times a year, and I think that's helpful because you got a smaller group and you can go into more detail about, you know, the needs or what's going on and, and um, bounce ideas around. And I have noticed this year the budget process was much more involved than in past years, one, because of the situation, and the board was just a lot more involved than they've ever been. Right. So we were giving them a lot more detail, a lot more information. Uh, things that they didn't ask for, like I did a three to four year, I did a four year uh, budget projection, you know, just to show them what what was going to happen in the future, and I and they understood it, and it really made sense to them. So that was it was kind of good to see that. Oh, that's a bonus. That's yeah. great. We also have an audit committee that meets probably also three or four times a year. Um, they meet with the internal auditor. They meet with the external auditor before and after the audit. And we have a finance committee as well that meets um, probably five or six times a year, and they are involved in the budget. We present the budget to them first. Um, they provide us with feedback. They are also in, involved in creating this five-year budget projection. So we do have those committees. And each of the audit committee is actually made up of the entire board plus three community members. And the finance committee is made up of um, mostly community members, but two board members as well. Wow, so you have two groups. That's different. Yeah. And the audit, com yeah, the audit committee, um, that's a big audit committee too. 
that's uh, that's unusual. Wow. Well, the, it certainly goes with that idea of being transparent, and and uh, I think the more transparency that there is, the better the the community feels about the school district, and um, you tend to have better results at uh, vote time. We will see. Yes. <laughs> we can only hope. Right. Are there different questions that are being asked this year because of the financial situation that everyone is in? I think everything is being looked at, um, you know, through a different lens. And thing we eliminated, um, you know, I don't want to say waste, but I, I don't even want to say fat. But we, in our budget preparations, we had class sizes of nine and twelve. And, you know, ridiculously low class sizes as a result of one of our grades moving to another school. And um, a few years ago, and the number of staff was never adjusted. So I find that we're looking at things very closely to determine where there is excess and where there is waste and eliminating it. We've been able to do that and present a good budget without cutting positions. So, yes, they're definitely looking at things more closely. Have any other questions come in? There are no questions at this time, ladies and gentlemen. Again, if you'd like to ask a question on your telephone, please press 7 pound on your phone now or send a chat question to the Q&A group. Any uh, topics that we haven't covered that uh, now that you're thinking about it and thinking about this in a, a big picture way that uh, you think would be important for others to know about uh, putting their reports together and or dealing with the uh, the board itself or those committees. I think it's important for when you present the report to know what's behind the numbers. So when you're asked, you can you can tell them, well, this this net represents this, this represents that, to really understand the report yourself, so that you can explain it in detail. So that they really, once if they do ask the questions, you have it, and then they can be confident in what you're saying. Absolutely. And uh, Sylvia and Anne Marie, anything that um, you think is helpful? Um, you know, way back I remember Mary Ellen Clark um, presenting uh, a workshop, and you know, I, I guess the one thing that really stuck out in my mind is that you know she always said that there had to be a beginning balance, a total for receipts, a total for disbursements, and an ending balance, and um, you know, on our report, even though it's listed by funds and within each fund, we have several or we can have several checking accounts, saving accounts, bank accounts in general, um, the, the board is getting a summary. However, I keep a separate um, report for each account that lists just that, you know, the, the opening balance, the receipts for that bank account, um, the disbursements for that individual bank account, and then there's the, the ending bank balance. Um, so I think that that's important to have. Um, I know our auditors have, you know, looked at it. Um, you know, they, they go mostly through our, our regular treasurer's report and um, our regular bank statements. But, um, but I think I keep that more just for me. Um, you know, when Mary, Mary Ellen Clark speaks, you, you listen. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, Jay O'Connor is the new Mary Ellen, <laughs> and um, Jay will actually be presenting at the annual conference, and he is also presenting in, for the treasurer's strand at the uh, SBMW. And he's also doing a, um, a workshop on uh, hard times are here for the fiscal strand at the SBMW. 
so Jay will be updating us on um, information that he has gleaned from all that is going on. And uh, our own Steve Van Heusen will certainly keep us up to date with uh, what's going on in the political realm. Donna, Leo asked about health care reform impacting the budget. Um, I think for this coming year, it's not. But in the future years, for those of us doing multi-year projections, it definitely will. We're going with the rates that our providers have given us, so we don't expect those to change as a result of any health care reform. We assume that they took them those reforms into account when they created their rates. So as far as impacting the 1011 budget, the answer is no. Okay, for health care? Unless it's in the rate, and we don't know that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that's um, certainly one of the big budget issues, plus you have your retirements and um, salaries. Those are the, the big areas for those for the budgets. And uh, school districts are a people business. Um, and if you want quality people, you need to provide the uh, salaries for it. And um, yeah, it's just too bad that communities don't realize the value of everyone who works in the school district because education is certainly the future of our country and um getting on a soapbox uh, a little bit here but <laughs> and probably talking to the the choir but um it really is too bad that uh, education is not as valued or or the people who provide it I should say don't seem to be as valued as uh, some others in our society. Um, there's a lot of education that goes into being into this uh, field, and that's all valued. Uh-huh. Anything else? Okay, well, um, any um, certainly a closing remark from uh, each of you? Well, I think if anybody has any questions, um, get, my email address is volponea at dfsc.org. Um, and I'd be happy to go through any of the information that's been given on the presentation. Um, or if they want to just send me their email address and I can forward anything that um, that they may have a question on. Okay. Thank you, Anne Marie. Uh, and I, you can do the same for me. Um, my email is Palmer R at lkgeorge dot org. Okay. Thank you, Renee. No problem. Okay. And uh, Sylvia, we thank you also for uh, providing this information. And thank all of you and our uh, sponsor for uh, providing information, providing support. And uh, Kadeni Architects, uh, if uh, you're in the field and and need an uh, architect, we certainly hope you consider using them. Thank you to all of you. We have another uh, monthly planner coming up, and it is May 5th, and we're talking about state aid. (laughs) Uh, So certainly a good topic, and we have two people. Uh, Both of them have worked for state aid planning and now are uh, business officials in the school district, so they know both sides of that realm and should be able to provide a great deal of information for you. Oh, that sounds great. Yeah, so thank you to all of you for attending and presenting and certainly look forward to seeing you or having you attend another New York State ASBO event. Okay. Thank, you, thank you, Donna. Thank you, Donna. This concludes today's webinar. Thank you for attending. The moderator has ended the conference. Goodbye. Thank you for calling.